Go Dutch. Oh! like transition that you've had to make from amateur to pro the biggest transition is honestly uh, making it a lifestyle it's not you know as an amateur I'll fight a tournament take a break you know uh, and, like take a couple weeks off and get, go back on but being a pro you have to be in shape all year round you know you can't take time off and just, just stay in the gym that's the only thing but you know it comes with the game it's my lifestyle and I love it so okay. it's not really hard yeah what about the uh, the speed of uh, the speed of the game? There's a big big transition transition from amateurs to pros, and the, the big thing is uh, from amateurs. It's all about punch rate. You know, you have to be you have to throw a lot of punches, score points, and pros. It, you have time to you know break your opponent down. You really, you don't and to learn your opponent for a couple rounds and learn his weaknesses. Amateurs, the biggest thing is um, you, you don't have time to do that. So you have, you have to have a high punch rate, a good and technical for for those three those three rounds. You only have, you only get three rounds. So if you lose one round, you've done lost half the fight. So do you think for somebody who's uh, who's starting out as an amateur, who has a couple of fights on, under their belt, you would say? Uh, the key thing to being successful is to throw a lot of punches. But that, that's your basic to, to be, be basic and be successful. That's basically what you need. Like so, keep it simple, but yeah, throw a lot of punches. Simple, yeah, throw a lot of uh, throw a lot of punches, but then that you can break it down to technique. Now you have to have a good technique while you throw those punches. Yeah, and so that breaks down another asset. So, but if you throw a lot of punches, you, you're more than likely to be successful in amateur boxing. Yeah. But when you turn pro, then you can kind of set yeah. up your shots a little turn, bit more, right? Turn pro, you can set up shots. You take a little bit more time. Uh, yeah. Real quick, I want to um, see if you can kind of demonstrate. Um, I've been trying to show my boxers uh, how to how to use feints. How to use feints to kind of hold their opponent. How to use feints to set up a jab. How to use a feint to uh, set up a right hand. How would you how would you work a feint into your combinations? One thing. Um, Faint is something that every boxer should be doing because when you faint, you should be okay. You have to be focused. When you faint, you see what your opponent does, what reaction he does. If you faint him, you can faint him and see his left hand goes down a little bit, his right hand goes down a little bit. You have to faint, and but you have to be relaxed when you're doing it. You know, because if you're tense, you're not. You have to be focused. Make him faint, see what his reaction, and then you counter to that reaction. Everybody, every fighter is going to be something different. They could, you know, lean this way, lean that way, you know, duck. You're, so you faint and then see what they're doing. Then you can set up your punches after you see their their mistakes. So when you faint, do you do you only faint with like say the jab with the lead hand, or can you faint with with pretty much anything? Like you, you can faint with just body movement. Mm -hmm. the, the, honestly, the best thing is. To, to faint without without using your hands. Like mm. if you faint with your body, because when you move your hands, you know, you're, you're making yourself open. So okay. the less less of a target, the better you are, you know. Could you demonstrate real quick? I know yeah, it's hot just, here. You're moving your feet, just boom, boom. You just faint, faint like that, faint like this, faint. As long as you're, you're having your way, mm. Mm. boom. See, my hands are staying right here, okay. but I'm fainting with, with like a jab step. Jab step, then I'm back in position. This way, this way. Just doing little movements like that. Okay. You, uh, your opponent's gonna, uh, he's gonna do, he's gonna react to that. You know what I'm saying? If he, when he reacts to that, then you study and see where he moves. 
then I can faint and then come with the hook if, if he drops that hand. Or faint, jab, boom, faint, throw different punches. What would you say is like your, uh, your biggest weapon in the ring? IQ, my, my ring IQ, and that's um, learn, uh, being able to adjust to different styles. And especially in the amateurs, that's a, a skill set you need to have because you're going to fight different styles. You're going to fight uh, guys that like to come forward and brawl, guys that like to box. You have to be able to adjust. How much, uh, how important do you think uh, an extensive amateur career is for somebody who turns, who wants to turn pro? Um, really, I don't think it's that important because the pro games, it's, it's oh, so really? much different. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's a big advantage if you do, if you do have an extensive amateur background, but you can still be very successful and not have a big amateur background in the pro game. If you could be like um, growing up and just watching uh, seasoned professionals, you know, you see their IQ because their IQ is very high. You know that, like I was talking about feigning and mm -hmm. adjusting to opponents and just things like that. It's, it's all, it's all, it's all mental. Okay. Texas is a pretty big uh, powerhouse in boxing, right? Big. Yeah. How do you big. compare? How boxing do you, and football. That's boxing how you get and football. Over there. Those are like two main things. Yeah. How do you compare the uh, the styles of boxing here in California to the styles of boxing in Texas? Um, I mean, there, there's always going to be different styles wherever you go, but to me, there, there's not really much of a big difference except that uh, here in California, there's more boxing. There, mm -hmm. like it's, it's the boxing mecca, and so that's why I made the move over here. It's really because of sparring. You know, there's I can always get sparring. I couldn't always get sparring where I was from. Mm -hmm. I'm from Midland, Texas, and that's uh, uh, I'm not. Uh, it's not, it's not known for boxing, you know. Okay. So I'm trying to be the first one to make it from boxing in that town. Awesome, awesome. Uh, when's your next fight? July 20th. July 20th. In Ontario, California. Ontario. Yeah. It's at uh, the hotel over there. At the Double Tree Hotel. Double Tree yeah, Hotel, Double Tree. Ontario, California. July 20th. Yep. All right. Good luck on your fight. Thank you. All right, thank you.